Hello, and welcome to Econ 10.5. Yes, look, I got a friend here. Yay! Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, having fun with these filters. So, mm -hmm. hope y'all like it. Um, so, let's look at ten, topic 10.5. Uh, we are going to talk about growth, uh, resources, and development. Uh, we've talked about lower developed countries, um, so we're going to talk a little bit more uh, about that. We've been talking about trading around the world and why it's important. Um, so the population growth rate uh, is how fast the population is growing, how much it increases every year. Um, you should all know what malnutrition is. Now, malnutrition is not just you're hungry. Uh, malnutrition is where you are constantly receiving inadequate nutrition. Um, that's why we have a lot of programs to make sure children are getting like milk and cheese and bread, like the basic nutritional needs that they have. And, and some kids in some countries do not have that. Um, internal fi financing. This is when uh, capital is derived from the savings of countries own citizens. So like here in the United States, when we invest our money in banks, that money is turned around and it's loaned out to businesses for capital investments. So that's internal for financing. Uh, the next one, which will be uh, foreign investment is where the capital comes from say another country. Maybe uh, foreign investors are depositing their money in the US. Um, and so there's two ways. They can either do the next two ones, either direct investment or a portfolio investment. So a direct investment would be when investors establish a business in another country. So if it was foreign direct investment um, here in the United States, maybe we would have like British Petroleum, which is a British company, and they set up shop here in the United States. Uh, foreign portfolio investment would be where foreign investors purchase uh, stocks, bonds, um, like people that buy our uh, bonds for our national debt. That's foreign portfolio investment. Uh, debt rescheduling. This is when a lender, uh, and, and talking about in this topic, it says a lending nation and a debtor nation, because sometimes countries loan each other money. And um, they might lengthen the time of the debt repayment. Uh, and forgive or dismiss as part of the loan in return uh, for a stabilization program. I point this out because this is an uh, adulting too. Um, if you ever get in a situation and you have a loan, it is worth calling your lender and seeing if you can do debt rescheduling. Um, you can do that sometimes, especially like on a mortgage, like through COVID, um, several people have lost their jobs. Uh, and maybe they couldn't afford their payment, but they could afford part of it. So they might have talked to their mortgage lender uh, about debt rescheduling because it really, it's really not in the bank's best interest either if you foreclose on the house. They would rather you pay for it. Um, so it's always worth that shot. I mean, if they tell you no, you're not any worse off than you are and you might get a yes. Um, so yeah. Stabilization program, this is where you might change uh, the country's economic policies to meet uh, international monetary fund goals. Uh, and this is gonna be a nonprofit that seeks to end poverty and um, increase uh, the economy of, of countries. And it's part of non-governmental organizations. These are independent groups that raise money to help fund aid and development programs. Uh, you know, like the Red Cross is one of them. UNICEF, there's so many different nonprofits that are trying to raise money to fund aid for uh, countries or, you know, causes, poverty. Um, and even at in the United States, when we're very, very, very developed, um, we still have people that can't read um, or who don't eat a healthy diet. And when I talk about a healthy diet, we're talking about people that don't have a healthy diet because they're they're poor, not, and I'm using myself as an example. I'm a picky eater. I'm a terrible eater. I hate fruit bits and vegetables. So you might say, I don't eat a healthy diet, but I am not lacking of, how do I put it? I could eat fruits and vegetables if I wanted to. It's, it's my choice that I don't. Whereas somebody else that 
doesn't have the choice to eat hardly anything and they're malnourished. Um, you know, if not having enough food would reduce your chances of living to adulthood, imagine what that would be. Imagine if you couldn't go to school, y'all are probably like, oh, that'd be great. It, it's not, y'all, it's really not because then you'd be uneducated and you wouldn't be able to read or write. Um, I can't imagine that. And there are a lot of children around the world that do experience that. Now, how do we measure population growth? Um, and what are things that can cause population growth? Um, if you look in Kenya, Kenya has some really poor areas. Um, I know Kibera, Kenya uh, uh, is the largest slum in the world. And if you look here, look, these kids, they don't look like y'all. Let's be real. They're all sitting up. There's not a sleeping kid out there, is there? Mm -hmm. They're all engaged. Look, they're wearing uniforms too. Oh, no saggy britches. Yeah. Um, they're all engaged. They're happy to be in school because the alternative is to be at home working and like not working in it and making money. You're out there working so you can eat for the day. Um, and so when it goes to population growth, this can affect um, poverty and the development of the countries. Uh, if you look here at the population growth of Kuwait and Chad, like Kuwait was almost 4%. Um, I find it interesting, China's not on here because China had their population growth uh, uh, mandates. And if you look at us, the United States, we're growing about 6.6 .6 or 7%. You know, in America, it's okay not to have kids. It's, it's okay to wait. It's yeah, other countries, they just don't have those luxuries that we have. Now, parts of Africa, Asia, and Latin America, um, the physical geography can really, really hinder uh, development of a country. Um, you know, not every country has oil. Not every country is a warm climate and can grow, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables or, you know, has a lot of trees so they can have lumber. Um, so lacking those materials can really hurt a country, uh, especially, and it's written up here, fertile farmland. If, if the dirt is terrible or like salty, you always hear about that really salty earth, you can't grow anything in it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, think about like, you know, in the Caribbean, those islands, if a hurricane hits it really bad, it destroys the whole thing. Uh, it's terrible. Um, some obstacles to development for countries would be obtaining physical capital, um, educating and training growing populations. Like there's some kids you can't even get to school because they've got to work just to help feed the family. And also if nutrition and health is not good, then the health of the people is, I mean, nutrition is not good. The health's not going to be good. Um, now, if you look here, I love this one because this is the desert. Yeah, there's a whole lot of desert, but we don't have anybody that lives there because how are you going to do it? I mean, one, you can't build a house on the sand to be sliding. Two, how are you going to get water there? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we look at literacy around the world, you can see the United States, we do a really good job. 95% of primary school age children are in school and 99% of both males and females can read and write. Look down at the bottom at Niger. Um, one, only 43% of males, but females is only 15%. It's even less than half of that. And y'all, I mean, I can just tell you, um, when you're less educated, like if you can't read and write, that is a great way for somebody to put themselves above you and control you more. Um, imagine a sheet of paper being stuck out in front of you and you have no idea what it says and your husband's going, well, sign it okay and you have to trust him and what what if what what are you scamming you i mean i want to know what i'm signing i read it i want to know um so yeah it's really kind of sad now political factors can limit or reverse and reverse a nation's development um there are ldcs um lower developed countries uh they are former colonies of Europe. We were a former colony of Europe. 
Um, and colonies had to supply the ruling powers with resources. When we were just the colonies here in the United States, there were a lot of resources we were having to send back to England. Um, and that was one of the reasons we revolted too. We didn't like the rule and, and everything they were telling us to, to give them. Um, there's also political barriers that, that hinder growth. If you take the country Benin in Africa, uh, they started in 1960 gaining their independence from France. They were a colony from France. Um, in 1972, they had a Marxist government. And remember, Karl Marx was the founder of communism. Um, so they became communistic uh, after a succession of military governments. 1989, um, the communism ideology was abandoned in Benin. Um, and they agreed to the International Monetary Fund and World Bank uh, economic adjustment measures. These are two nonprofits that really try to help in poverty and, and help stimulate economic growth in countries. And they had their first presidential elections in 1991. 2001, uh, privatization was continuing, more free market aspects. Uh, and then 2006, uh, they finally were granted um, uh, some debt relief. And uh, we signed a three, $307 million uh, Millennium Challenge account grant uh, to give to Benin. Now, uh, infrastructure, um, this is something that requires large sums of money. Uh, in 2021, um, I think right now, what is it, December, uh, Congress just passed a bill, uh, which is an infrastructure bill, and it's like, like two or three trillion dollars, I believe. Um, so it requires really large sums of money, and I'm not talking like 10,000, like you and I would think is a large sum, we're talking billions. Um, and so, you know, acquiring these funds, um, a country can do different means. They can do internal financing. That's what we're doing by raising taxes to fund these bills. Uh, it could be foreign investment. It could be borrowing money from another country, uh, or it could be foreign aid. Um, however, borrowing money can create problems of its own. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, here you've got a woman who's depositing money in the bank in Brazil. That's going to aid the country of Brazil because now you have an asset in a bank that the, the woman's saving her money here and part of that money can be loaned out for capital investments somewhere else. Um, multinationals are another way to invest. Um, and you can see there's three different ways. You've got the foreign direct investment. Um, like Toyota. Toyota assembles cars in 28 different countries. Uh, offshoring, Nike and a lot of other uh, leisure wear uh, manufacturers, especially shoes, um, they will subcontract out. They don't have a plant, but it'd be like if I am Edwards plant and I'm in China, Nike might subcontract me, hey, here's our design for our shoes, you make them this way, then ship them to us. We're going to put our brand on them, box them, and sell it. And then you've got international franchising, which would be like, you know, there's McDonald's in, in over 100 countries. Um, and they're owned by somebody in that country. So that is international franchising. If we look at hourly pay, now granted, this is already 10 years old because it's back from 2000, uh, 2011. Denmark has one of the highest hourly wages. It does. Now, on the flip side, a lot of you are probably going, I didn't move to Denmark. What is their tax base? How much are they taxed? That's what you need to know. Because you can make less money in a country that's less taxes and have more net pay, more disposable income. Because that's what we care about is disposable. Um, if you look at the United States, we're sitting there around about $24. Um, I can tell you this has really changed, especially when you're talking about manufacturing or you're talking about a trade school job. Um, I like the, the Australians call them tradies. Um, I like that term. Are you a tradie or they say tradie or uni, meaning are you trade school or you go to university? Um, a lot of our trade school jobs are really paying good money right now. And it goes right back to the simple uh, concept of supply and demand and economics. The supply of plumbers and electricians and blue collar workers is small 
but the demand is high. We still need people to do those things. Um, so therefore it's driving prices up. Um, so I talked about this briefly with the terms. You've got the World Bank, the United Nations Development Program, the International Monetary Fund, which is the IMF. These are privately run aid groups that give economic help and advice in some of the less developed countries. Um, and here, this is Bolivia. Um, I've always grown up, since I've been, been on this earth, uh, women have always had the right to vote, but it really wasn't that long ago um, that women didn't get a chance to vote. Um, so here in Bolivia, women just recently got the right to vote and the women are exercising their right to be able to do it. Uh, it's a privilege to them. And y'all, we think about, you know, I know when I was 18, I was like, okay, y'all yeah, vote. Eh. Cause it was always there. But if I had been denied the ability to vote, oh, I guarantee you it would have had a whole lot more meaning to me when I finally got to. Uh, if you look, here are the three major nonprofits um, World Bank, UNDP, and IMF, and you can see, um, if you look at the purpose, all of them include uh, end, uh, World Bank, end extreme poverty, poverty, oops, UNDP, poverty reduction, IMF, facilitate economic growth and reduce poverty. Um, that is what these organizations are trying to do. They're trying to help these countries uh, with economic growth and also ending poverty. And that is going to be the uh, end of 10.5. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great day. Great day. Say goodbye to my little friend here. Say bye.